Hey, welcome to another Fog of Gore mini painting video. This time I'm going to do something a bit different. Not so grim dark as most of my other videos, but rather a bright colored towel. I'm doing jade and gold because I like to try out some different uh, textures, some different materials on my minis. Check it out. Here you can see them rotating around and it's bright, bright green with gold trim and then black uh, cloth and black weapons. It's a pretty simple color scheme, you know, green, yellow and black. It contrasts well, it's great because you can have black in the recesses, really dark uh, shadows, and then you have green for your armor and gold for the trim. And I think this works well if you scale it up to bigger models, like the big battle suits and so on. You just add more gold trim to the higher uh, ranking figures and uh, more details on the weapons for the battle suits. All right, let's start. So I'm starting with the cloth because that's deeper in the model, harder to reach. And I'm going to give it a cover of ashen gray. This is a dark gray and it's perfect if you want to make something black because after the dark gray you can still shade it with some non oil and get a bit more interesting texture in your black. So the cloth is all in ashen gray and now I'm going to start with all the armor plating in warpstone glow. This is a bright green and it's great to get this start with the jade colored armor. And I'm just going to do everything in green now. I'll figure out where I put the gold trim later on. So now I'm going to dry brush the armor with a little bit of Praxiti white. And I'm doing this very, very lightly. I don't need to hit all the edges, just a little bit. Later on we're going to cover this and make it look a bit more jade. And then I want to have a little bit of white in there. A little bit of the edges need to be a bit rougher. So you don't have this beautiful, perfectly sculpted jade statue, but more of a damaged, old look that's, I think, a bit more suitable for a grimdark towel. I just want to give a quick shout out to my patrons. Thank you guys, you make this channel possible. And if you're watching this video and you're enjoying this, please hit that like button. That would really help me out. Let's continue. And here he is with the dry brush of white. You can see it's blotchy, it's streaky, it's dusty. All of that is fine because we're going over it now with Waystone Green. And this is a technical paint by Citadel. It's a very glossy and translucent green. And that will really give it this sort of polished jade look. And here he is with the waystone green all over the armor. It looks nice and glossy, it's still drying. So I'm going over all the cloth parts with non-oil to darken them down, see if I can get them to a decent black. Because I want to have this contrast between the black and the green before I start adding gold, just to have a better idea of what the model will look like when it's completely finished. All right, the non-oil is drying, and so I'm going to start to paint some golden details. I'm using Retributor Armor, which is a very yellow gold, and it covers really well. I might brighten it up a bit more later on with Auric Armor or Auric Gold, which is even more yellowy, but that one doesn't cover so well. So I'm starting with this first. And I'm just going to improvise as I go. Uh, of course, these bigger symbols are going to be gold, but I also want to add a little bit of gold trim here and there, just to get some more color on the model. So I've done the first layer of gold trim, and I think I'm going over it again with the Auric Armor to make it even more yellow, but I'm letting it dry. In the meantime, I figured out that the gray just isn't black enough. So I'm going to give it the second wash of non-oil to try and darken it down a bit more and make it look like it's proper black and not just a dark gray. So the second layer of uh, non-oil is now on the cloth and it's drying and it's time for the weapon. And I left the weapon for last because the weapons are such an important part of all Warhammer 40k models, but especially Tau because they're super, super big, you know, especially on these battle suits, they have gigantic weapons. So you want to do something proper with them. And I'm going over this with Contrast Black Templar. And this only really works if you've done a Zenithal highlight. If you haven't, then just paint this ashen gray and go over it twice with non-oil, just like I did the cloth. 
but I'm using black tempera because I know one layer of non oil isn't enough to blacken it enough because that's what I did with the cloth and one layer wasn't enough I had to do two I'm going over this with contrast black templar and then I'm going to figure out how I'm going to get some highlights in here maybe add a little bit more gold maybe a green stripe somewhere I'll figure it out after this paint has dried now I really liked the black templar on the weapon because it really gives a good contrast so I did the pouches the grenades and all the other stuff that he has hanging off his belt as well and now I'm taking some abaddon black to get a bit of black here on the lens in his face. So I think that would look really nice. It would contrast well and would make the face a bit more interesting too. Later on I might touch this up, give it a little glow, maybe look, make it look like there's some light coming out of here. But for now just a bad and black here will do. So I'm still waiting on the contrast paint to dry so I'm going over the gold now with Auric armor and I'm using this to touch up the parts that didn't get covered properly with the first layer and to give it a little bit of a highlight so I'm making sure I'm doing the uppermost parts of the armor that are in gold with this yellowish gold and I'm probably going to leave it off the parts of the trim that are on his legs just to give a bit of an impression of light coming from the top now for the weapon to finish it off, uh, I'm just going to dab and stripe on some lead belcher. Make it look a little bit warm and at the same time use that to create a bit of a highlight on the top of the weapon. And it will just get this slight metallic shine and look a little bit like it's battle damaged, a little bit worn. And I think that would be enough to give the weapon just a little bit more interest because just black with one gold dot isn't really interesting enough and I'm trying to work as neatly as possible because I don't want any of this lead belcher to get on other parts of the model because you'd have to redo the jade and the gold again alright that adds just that little bit of interest to the weapon and if you're painting the larger models like the battle suits I would definitely put on more gold, put on some gold trim, get maybe some red lights here and there going. But since this is a troop, his weapon is not so ornamental. So Now for the final details, I'm going to paint his skin blue, of course. And I'm using Thunderhawk blue, which is a pretty cool desaturated grayish blue. I think it's perfect for Tau skin. And here he is, all finished. I think it worked out well. The black looks good, the cloth actually has some interesting shading in there and with the gold trim that of course always works. Black and gold is always a good combination. The jade I'm quite okay with. I think I could go a bit darker and I think I could get some more interesting textures underneath the surface to make it look a bit more worn and also get some more different color variation in the jade. But overall I think it worked out well. As always, I want to thank you for watching. You can find links to my Instagram, Facebook, Patreon in the description below. Check those out. And of course, don't forget to like this video if you really enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.